Ah, uh, yes. E3. It's back. We've talked about it. There's a big, like, three or four day event, like the 12th to the 15th. Starts on the weekend of all things, which is pretty interesting. Nintendo and Microsoft are going to be there. Sony's skipping out because Sony is just doing whatever the hell Sony wants to do. But, uh, really, I want to talk about this because, honestly, uh, I think that this E3 has the potential to be Nintendo's best E3 ever. And there's been quite a few bangers if you look back at E3 history. Now, for me as a Zelda fan, there's basically two E3s, well, and now three E3s, that basically stand out for me uh, specifically. But there's been other moments along the way I want to discuss. There was obviously, I mean, who could forget E3 2006, the reveal of Twilight Princess, completely out of left field, nobody expected it, Shigeru Miyamoto on stage, pulling the Master Sword off his back. Like, it was, dude, it was great. Um, that, that was, you know, one of the best, uh, live E3 moments of all time. Uh, there's also been the other E3 moments, you know, with Iwata pulling a Wii. Remember when he reached into his jacket and pulled out a Wii? Now he did the same thing with DDS and 3DS, but it was like crazy. He's talking about, oh, we got this new next gen system and all that. And boom, he pulls a Wii, not a Wiimote, a Wii out of his jacket pocket. It was, dude, that was a crazy moment uh, as well. There's uh, other standout moments, uh, you know, we had obviously E3 2016, which is always going to be special to me. Do I have my 2016 badge around here? No, I don't, I don't think I do. I got my other two badges. My E3 2016 badge is, uh, you know, somewhere in storage because it says Zelda Informer on it, and that's a sour spot for me. But E3 2016 was actually a very special place because, one, it's the only E3 I got to attend as media, and two, it's my first E3. And because it was my first E3 in person, it was just special. Uh, there was something about that E3 that was magical, and it helps that it was all about Breath of the Wild. There were other playable games that on the show floor, but not from Nintendo's booth. Nintendo's booth, this is my, I think is the only E3 to date. Like they ended up having a Super Mario Odyssey themed E3 the next year, but there was other games in Nintendo's booth to play beyond Mario Odyssey. In E3 2016, it was Zelda. That was it. If you went to Nintendo's booth, you were playing nothing. You got the VIP access, the media access, and got to go up to the upstairs area. Guess what? You were just playing Breath of the Wild. There was no other game to play but Breath of the Wild at that E3. But it's still magical to me because Breath of the Wild is my favorite game of all time. And I knew it was going to become my favorite game of all time after that E3. The demo area alone was already, which is, as we now know is the starting area for Breath of the Wild, was already one of my favorite games to ever play. And that was just a demo area of a starting area. Obviously, the rest of the game went on to exceed my expectations. Uh, so there was that. Uh, and then, obviously, E3 2019. Again, I'm a Zelda guy, so having a press conference end with uh, Breath of the Wild 2's surprising unveiling, uh, that was that, that was obviously a special spot in my heart. Now, some of you guys are going to have your own favorite E3 memories. Maybe it's back at E3 2018 when Metroid Prime, what, 2018? 2017, when uh, Metroid Prime 4 was, was, was name dropped, although we're still waiting for that one um so like there's been a lot of special moments for nintendo over the years there's also been a lot of duds for nintendo over the years and yeah i have a little bit of more bias towards e3 than i once did because now i attend right i've been to uh three of the last four e3s that have been available to go to in person obviously there that's not the case this year hopefully we'll be back at e3 uh in 2022 so hopefully we'll be back in person for that um, but, you know, and, and I got my gamer passes here, you know, there, there's some special memories I have here with Luigi's Mansion 3 on this one. Um, that was the last E3, right? Yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield, that was E3 2019. That's what this badge is here. Uh, and then this badge is E3 2018, which is also a special year because this is the first year I went as Nintendo Prime. You'll see Nintendo Prime even listed on the badge. Despite this being a gamer pass, you were able to put a business on it, and so I put Nintendo Prime. I didn't do that on my 2019 one. Um, I don't think it was actually an option to put it on this one, but um, yeah, we're, we're still trying to get media passes eventually one day. And I got a third lanyard in here um, that's from the... Uh, the other uh the other e3 but i here's the thing guys i think nintendo is poised to have a massive e3 and the reason isn't just because i have some bias and some affinity towards uh the event it's because i think nintendo has kind of set themselves up for it now we didn't get a ton of game announcements in 2020 if we actually go back and look at it nintendo didn't announce a lot they didn't release a lot paper mario obviously uh, we ended up with all the 35th anniversary goodness pikmin 3 deluxe early in the year we had you know a bevy of of, of wii u ports um pokemon mystery dungeon 
stuff I got going on. Uh, and then obviously Animal Crossing being the big one. I mean, the, uh, the really the three anchor games for last year in terms of exclusives was Animal Crossing, Paper Mario, and then uh, Hyrule Warriors uh, um, Age of Calamity, right? Like that was like Nintendo's three game approach last year. And it's been a while since Nintendo only really gave us three. There's, there's more. There's uh, what, what was there? Uh, Clubhouse 51 games was in there as well as an exclusive, but in terms of like system movers, you know, that was really those three games. Uh, and obviously this year we haven't yet had an exclusive land. We obviously know, Hey, new Pokemon snaps coming pretty damn soon. Uh, Mario golf, super rush. Hello. That's coming. I think in June, right? I'm pretty sure it's a June game. Uh, so I think right now, next month is the month we don't really have a major game for, but either way, right? New Pokemon snap and super Mario, uh, Mario golf, super rush. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and obviously we know about Skyward Sword HD coming, but really we don't know about much from like Nintendo Studios. Mario Golf Super Rush, from all we can tell, is not being made by a Nintendo-owned studio, uh, which isn't a problem. Most of the Mario sports games have not been made by Nintendo-owned studios. Uh, and obviously, we know Pokemon Snap. It's being made, I believe, by Game Freak directly. Uh, so that's great. And we know about Pokemon Legends Arceus. Obviously, we have uh, other Pokemon goodness later this year with the Diamond and Pearl, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Uh, but again, none of this is like what Nintendo's own internal teams are working on. We haven't had a nintendo internal team game since paper mario last summer like it's it feels weird that we don't have an internal wholly owned nintendo studio game since then i mean we've had some ports and bowser's fury was amazing i think it's setting us up for the future of 3d mario games but at the same point it's not technically a new game it's just like an experimental mode tacked on to a wii u game so when are we going to get the new games from Nintendo? And I feel like that's why this E3 is exciting. I think there's two basic things that are going to happen that are very likely at this E3. And no, Switch Pro that's been you know rumored and reported on for ages, that I don't think is going to be unveiled at E3. If that gets unveiled at E3, I will be highly surprised. Nintendo has not done a uh, hardware reveal at E3 in a long time. Uh, I think dating back to Wii U was like the last time they really did a hardware reveal at, at, at E3. And on top of that, um, I don't think they want to nerf sales of the Switch until uh, the system's much closer to come out. I said this at the end of my last video, but wake me up when September ends. Yes, that Green Day reference. Wake me up when September ends. Copyright strike. Um, so, yeah, like... I, I think the I think the month of September is basically when Nintendo's gonna unveil the Nintendo Switch Pro. They're not gonna call it the Switch Pro guy guys. It's gonna be like the new Nintendo Switch or Nintendo Switch XL, but it happens to be more powerful. Uh, it's going to be something along those lines. I you know Nintendo heck, maybe they even for some reason go the marketing direction of the other consoles and say it's going to be Switch 4K or, or I don't know. Like, Nintendo's going to have their own marketing strategy behind that uh, that system, uh, and they're going to name it with the name. It's probably going to be something that sounds stupid, but I'll probably end up buying it anyways. Um, I would like to see it called the Super Switch. Hello, can we get some hands raised for Super Switch? Anyone? Crickets? All right. Um, so I, I do think that there is a lot to be said uh, for what this system could be. Now, um, I don't think Nintendo is going to talk about the E3. I don't think it's uh, something on their agenda for E3 specifically. But I do think that what is on their agenda is a lot of game reveals. Now, look, I think they're going to blow out Zelda. I, I, the reason we didn't get the Mario 35th anniversary blowout sooner last year was because there was no E3. I think we're going to get a Zelda 35th anniversary blowout, and I think that's going to make up about half of their E3 presentation. I, I think we're getting a game collection. I think we're going to see Twilight Princess and the Wind Waker ported over. I think, obviously, they're going to cap it off with the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer. Maybe they save the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer. Maybe they kick off the event with Breath of the Wild 2. I have no idea. I think that game is close to ready, if I'm completely honest. Don't know if it's coming this year. It would be a really great announcement, though, if it did come this year. It is one of the major games in Nintendo's arsenal that I kind of have some vague expectations to release this year. But I don't think that's all Nintendo's going to talk about. Now, I don't think we're going to see Splatoon 3 this year. I think they'll talk about that in 2022. But I do think there is some good stuff they could be showing at this event. Uh, and my personal opinion is that Nintendo is going to kind of, sort of, uh, go almost all out. Uh, I think one game, as an example, we're going to see is Bayonetta 3. Now, why are we going to see Bayonetta 3? I think the game's almost done. Uh, we've heard it from uh, from the, the, the team that, hey, we can't talk about this game because Nintendo won't let us. 
uh, not because the game isn't being developed and going well. That game's been in development probably longer than any other Switch exclusive game not named Metroid. Uh, so I, I honestly think that, yeah, um, that game is going to get unveiled at E3. Uh, it's going to be you know a, a big deal. It's going to be advertised as the next major game from Platinum Games. Uh, and that, I'm cool with that. Like We're going to see Bayonetta 3. Uh, I don't... Unfortunately, guys, I don't think we're going to see Metroid Prime 4. Uh, I wish that was something to expect this year, but I, I just don't see Metroid Prime 4 making the cut. I still think that's an unveil for 2022, whether it's at E3 or a Nintendo Direct or some other event. Maybe they, I, I think it's almost too big to just drop on social media, but I thought that about Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity as well, and... Well, maybe it was just COVID. Who knows? Maybe they would have did a direct for it. So I do think that uh, we are going to see Bayonetta 3. Beyond that, I think Nintendo's just got a bunch of games to talk about. We know that Monolith Soft has been factually working on at least two games. One of them is likely the sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh, that series is gaining in popularity, not shrinking. They just had Pyra and Mithra out of the Smash. I think it's a great time to start talking about a sequel to that game. Uh, it's also been out for a while, so it would make a lot of sense. The Torna DLC has been out for a while as well. So to start talking about a sequel to that game makes sense. I also think Platinum Games has been working on a new IP. Uh, not Platinum Games, sorry. Monolith Soft has been working on a new IP. Uh, I have no idea what that IP is. But uh, I, I, there's been um, reports on hiring posts over the years about this new IP that seems unrelated to Xenoblade. So that is something to worry, work, worry, you know, think about as well. It's also possible those hiring posts were referring to Zelda because um, Monolith Saw basically has an entire team right now dedicated to helping the Zelda team with games like Breath of the Wild, obviously Breath of the Wild 2. So, the, it, you know, maybe that's really what was being referenced. But it's just worth noting that they could be working on a new IP. Uh, I do think that Retro Studios right now is working on two games. I don't know if we're going to see either of them. Metroid Prime 4 we know for sure is one. I do think there's a second game they're working on. And they've been hiring a lot of people. And if you read the hiring posts, it doesn't look like they're just talking about Metroid. It looks like they're referencing a potential different game entirely, whether or not that's the that old rumored Star Fox racing game or, or whatever else. Retro Studios has been working on something for years and years and years and years and years, and we have yet to see it. So... I presume maybe it's a continuation of the project before Metro Prime. Maybe it's not. I don't know what the turmoil is exactly like at that studio. I hope it's not as bad as I fear it is. Uh, then, you know, beyond that, we got to start talking about some of Nintendo's other IPs. We get a Kirby game every year. Could see a Kirby reveal. Uh, we, you know, are are we going to get a Smash Fighter reveal? That's always possible. We're going to get a Smash Fighter reveal. Uh, it wouldn't be out of the norm. It actually falls in line with their normal. Uh, release an announcement of Smash characters. So seeing one announced at E3, I don't think would be um, too unexpected. Uh, I think we're going to see some third-party games, but from Nintendo, you know, I'm going to kind of set third parties aside because I, I feel like we're going to hear about some new third-party exclusive games and, and other third-party uh, ports that are going to surprise you. I don't know what those are, but we're going to hear about some of them, especially from studios that aren't doing their own press conferences uh, because they're just not. You know, we've heard about, oh, Capcom's going to be there and WB is going to be there, but like, Square Enix isn't going to be there. Does that mean we're not going to see Square games at E3? No, they're just going to be, you know, the ones that are coming to Xbox Series X and S and the ones coming to Switch. So we'll probably see Project, Tri Project Triangle Strategy again and whatever else uh, Square might have in the works for Nintendo. I also think this is where we get some things like Resident Evil Revelations 3 or whatever they're calling that game unveiled for Switch because I believe fully believe that's coming this year. There's been a lot of rumors about that. Uh, but from Nintendo side of things, I think we're getting a Mario game announcement. I think we're getting, I don't know if it's going to be Mario Odyssey 2, but it's going to be something Mario. Um, I, I just don't know what. I don't know that it's coming this year either. I think it's going to be a slated for 2022. Uh, but I do think we're going to be getting a lot of Nintendo goodness. Um, whether that Mario, by the way, when I say Mario game, I don't mean Mario Kart. There's been a lot of people wondering about Mario Kart 9. I do think Mario Kart 9 is a possible surprise reveal for this year. I do think it would be... I mean, think of how killer the holiday would be if you had Breath of the Wild 2 and Mario Kart 9. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's repeating the Switch launch. Remember Switch launch of Breath of the Wild and then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? Imagine repeating that, but during a holiday period. And then during that same holiday period, you're also launching Switch Pro. Holy crap. I mean, you want to talk about shortages and scalper heaven with Switch Pro? You want to talk about one of the most high-demand systems of all time happening when we're supposed to be getting the first real high-demand holiday for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X where they should be in normal supply? I, I honestly think that um, 
all three systems this holiday, all three major platforms are going to be very hard to get. I think they're all going to have killer games. Halo Infinite, I believe, is going to be a holiday title for Microsoft this year. That's going to be obviously big. They can't, they can't keep the Xbox in stock as it is, um, let alone this holiday. Um, and I know you'd be like, oh, they're not going to sell a lot of copies. No, they're going to sell a lot of systems. Game Pass. It, it, it's real. It's a thing. Um, and I'll, maybe I'll do a video like this for Microsoft, too. Uh, down the line, what they're going to do. Um, I am going to miss the old Reginator, of course. He's not part of Nintendo anymore. I, I, I do think we might see Doug Bowser on camera. He, he seems to um, appear on camera uh, for E3s. So I do think we'll see him during this presentation. And the thing is, Nintendo is really well equipped for the way E3 is going to be this year. I do think we're going to have Nintendo Treehouse developer interviews. I do think that, uh, you know, Nintendo's going to kill it. They're probably going to have the best of the digital. Pre I think Microsoft's going to show the most games because they have a lot of studios that we haven't heard from. So, and plus they just bought Bethesda. So I think there's going to be a ton of games shown there. So they might have the best games presentation. I think Nintendo will have the best cohesive presentation. Microsoft always gets a little wordy um, at times. Phil Spencer likes to talk. And as much as I appreciate it, I mean, we all know Microsoft's presentations always fall a little bit flat, but it's going to be about the games, and they're going to have a lot of games. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that later, but Nintendo, I think, is going to have a lot of games, too. So when I say this is going to be like the best E3, I think it's just the kind of games Nintendo is going to talk about at E3, from the Zelda anniversary stuff that's going to hype up all Zelda fans. And let's be honest, every Zelda that they've unveiled at E3 has always been like a major highlight E3. So when we talk about, we're going to see Breath of the Wild 2. Breath of the Wild 2 is going to get blown out. When you hear stuff like that, that already tells you this is probably going to be a very exciting E3. The only Zelda reveal E3 that wasn't quote-unquote hyped was Skyward Sword. Well, you can argue people weren't excited about the Wind Waker either. That wasn't revealed at E3, though. But here's the thing. With Skyward Sword, the reason why I think the hype died for that is because the motion controls didn't work on stage. It just didn't work. So it made the game like, oh, my God, this is what they spent five years making, and it's a broken, hot mess. Ouch. Turns out to not be the case, but it didn't matter. That's what it was during the show. That was our first look at that game. Wasn't a good look for Nintendo. Um, as long as we don't get a Wii music repeat, like, can we not, please? Go that way with Miyamoto. Dance. I mean, as as funny as it was watching Miyamoto basically dance on uh, on uh, on stage <laughs> as it looked like he was trying to play Wii music. That didn't sound good, by the way. Miyamoto acted like it sounded like the coolest song ever, and it was just horrible. <laughs> It was, it was mega bad. Like, they could have a pre-recorded track or something. I mean, I guess Nintendo doesn't do... That's one thing you appreciate about Nintendo. When they make blunders, um, you see it live. Now, granted, this is all pre-recorded, so there's not going to be these kind of blunders unless they're intentional. Unless there's an intentional my body is ready moment, which they, they could do. Um, Nintendo doesn't really hit with the jokes these days, but you never know. I do think we're just going to get a lot of game reveals. You know, I know I didn't talk about a lot of specific ones because I don't really know what Nintendo has in the pipeline right now. They have to have something. All their teams aren't just sitting on their hands not making games. They're clearly making games. Mario Kart 9, a new Mario game, you know, a new mainline Mario game, uh, something new Xenoblade, new Zelda. But, like, there's more than that. Nintendo has so many teams making games. I, I, we're, I feel like we're, we're going to hear probably at least about 12 New games, in addition to Breath of the Wild, that we didn't know about before. 12 brand new exclusive games for Switch. That might sound crazy, but I don't think it really is because Nintendo hasn't really been talking much about games. Splatoon 3 was like the first major, you know, in-house built game they've unveiled in forever. They clearly have more than that going on. So, stay tuned. Uh, I'm Actually, you know what? Don't stay tuned. Screw that. If you don't like this video, unsubscribe from the channel. It's cool. I'm a very wordy guy. I like to talk. I like to have these open conversations. I know not everyone likes it. I've seen the comments lately. Uh, there's been a few comments where, oh, man, why don't you just get to the point? The point is the conversation. The point is the conversation. I'm going to tell you something right now. If you consume YouTube content, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you just want news, stop going on YouTube. All right? Stop it. I'm not saying that some of us don't report news. I'm not saying I don't report news. That Spawn Wave doesn't report news. That Philip DeFranco doesn't report like worldwide on YouTube news. I'm not saying that there's not news reporting on YouTube. What I'm saying is, where do you think we're getting our news from? None of us are the source for these, this news. We're getting our news off Twitter headlines. We're getting our news off of IGN. We're getting our news off of Kotaku, off Go Nintendo. Well, Go Nintendo not so much right now. Kevin Cassidy's taking a break. Uh, but off Nintendo Life, off um, 
Nintendo everything off uh, PlayStation Universe. We are getting our news from all these other places. So you want to just have the news, no conversation. Go to where the news comes from. Don't come to the messengers that are trying to create unique content around this news, right? Then there's no news in this video. This new this video is a discussion video. If you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. If you like the new kind of newish set, this is like our podcast set, just kind of repurposed a little bit for this video. And I think I'm going to do this for some other videos in the future as well. I kind of like this set to be used a bit more than just like once every other week. Um, so let me guys, guys know what you think about the camera work on this, the mic, the the TV in the back that right now has Reggie doing his Reggie thing. I don't even know if you can see his face. Yeah, you can probably see his face it's in the middle of the E and the three. Um, good old Reggie. I, I, I miss the Reggie in a lot of days, but I uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We do have a giveaway going on. If you made it to the end of the video, I'm sure you know by now, but if you don't, head down to the pinned comment and, or the description, enter our giveaway. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and catch you in the next video.